Hello and welcome to EV Platform. Today we're looking at the renewed MG ZS EV. So this is a top seller in a lot of European markets. The European buyer really likes this SUV, this electric SUV coming in at that price point and MG have decided to refresh it outside and inside. So let's take a look. Thanks very much, Derek. So let's talk about range and battery first. Well, we've got a 70 kilowatt hour battery in the larger version, which they're going to come to market with at the start. And that's going to follow in time by the 50.3 kilowatt hour version. But what's that going to get me on the road? The smaller one is a 320 kilometer WLTP figure. But then for the larger battery, we're stretching up to 440 kilometers. So this is starting to get into a really, really impressive uh, distance that you can cover on one single charge. MG are talking about a 34% battery density improvement over the previous ones. And we can see that been put into effect here. It's a liquid cooled pack, which is also very, very welcome. So then what's gonna happen once you do run out of charge and you wanna get some electrons into it? Well, on DC, we're looking at 92 kilowatts. So for me, that's quite impressive here. Yeah, there's cars out there that are gonna go a lot faster, but you're talking about at least double, if not treble the price of this one. Then on AC, you can get this on three phase, of course, with 11 kilowatts. So that at that stage, you're looking at, you know, in and around a six to seven hour charge time as you're sleeping overnight. And then even with the DC charging, stop off the motorway for 20 or 30 minutes and you're plowing back in a couple of hundred kilometers easily. Right, so what's gonna drive it then? Well, we've got a 130 kilowatt motor in the car, which once again is not gigantic considering some of the Tesla Model Y figures we're seeing out there, but it's still pretty good. It's gonna give you 280 Newton meters of torque. Now, MG, you're talking about a not to 50 kilometer per hour sprint of three and a half seconds. So what's that going to be not to 100? We don't know exactly yet, but something similar to the previous versions, you know, in and around that kind of eight second mark, let's just say. But anyway, I think that's enough detail on the batteries and on the motor. Derek, do you want to come in and give us a little bit more of the, the detail on what's going on in the car? Yeah, so functionality is of huge importance to anybody buying any type of car, but in an EV especially, and MG are definitely stepping up to the plate here it has it's able to tow not the biggest towing capacity it's 500 kg it also has the ability to have something on the roof that was controversial in the original zs ev because it wasn't rated mm -hmm. but this one is rated for 75 kgs trunk space or boot space is decent it's 448 liters and then if you put the seats down that gives you 1166 liters it has a 60 40 seat split as well in the rear the huge thing about functionality with this car that has vehicle to load technology and this is stuff that much higher expensive brands and evs are shouting about and mg are giving you this at a really reasonable price it has the capability of giving you 2.2 kilowatts vehicle to load they have an app which is the mg iSmart app it has route planning it can over there updates it has pre-conditioning it also has then some driver assists underneath what we know already, the MG Pilot. That's adaptive mm. cruise control, emergency braking, etc. You've got lots of USB connections, good size screens, a 10.1 inch and a seven inch display. They look a lot sharper. There was issues with, and a lot of people were given out about the, the responsiveness of the original MG ZS EV screen. And then you've got bits and pieces like wireless charging as well. So functionality takes a lot of boxes. Blake, what does it look like inside and outside? Yeah, aesthetically, I think we've taken a step up again, um, most notably at the front end. So we've got that that closed off front. Now, we saw something similar with the refresh on the Hyundai Kona recently, and I really, really like it when cars do that. Um, and I think MG have done it quite well here. It's not the most beautiful crossover SUV on the road. I'm not claiming that for a second, but once again, for the price, you know. So I'm quite impressed with it. You still got that nice, nice character line that runs down the, the length of the, the side of the car. Now it sits on 17 inch rims. Are they undersized? Yeah, they probably are. You know, it'd be nice to see 19s on that. But then again, that's where the MG Marvel R is gonna come in. The one that we made the video on previously. Um, inside then you got a little bit of carbon fiber effect on the dash. You got that nice 10 inch screen there in addition to the seven inch screen um, that sits just behind the steering wheel. You've got your panoramic sunroof, an old fashioned uh, press the button and it, it comes back, you know, uh, electric uh, sunroof. So they, they say it's 1.19 meters squared. Um, it looks nice. That's that's enough for me at the moment. Uh, but yeah, plenty of space in there, as you said as well. You've got some nice um, leather or leather effect materials, USB cables. Like, yeah, it, it, it looks like a, a pretty, pretty good offering. But once again, for the price, exceptional. But anyway, that's enough about uh, how the car looks inside and outside. Um, Derek, do you want to start rounding things up and let us know? 
Yeah, bring her back into the studio. Let's have a chat about uh, Blake. You recently had the MG5. It's not the same model, but it is from the same manufacturer, the estate or station wagon version. What were your mm. thoughts on MG before the brand? And what do you think of the car when you test drove it? Yeah, I was really intrigued because this was an estate or a station wagon. Now, let's just discount the, uh, the, the Taycan Cross Turismo and say that there's pretty much no electric estates out there, you know. Um, and I was just hugely impressed with it. Now, when I got into it, I was looking at the materials and the infotainment system was, was sluggish. And, and you know, I, I would have a long list of, of uh, kind of underwhelming characteristics or faults with the car. And then you pinch yourself and you go, look at the price you know so i was hugely impressed with it the range that i was getting out of it the speed of the motor as well gave a lot of uh surprises at traffic lights in the week that i had it yeah hugely impressed but derek you've actually driven uh, for your own channel the mg zs the, the ev so the one that we're talking about the pre refresh model that's probably more pertinent do you want to give us uh, your thoughts on that yeah really i was really impressed with the overall um size first of all for the amount of money that you're spending on an electric suv it gave a lot of good value it had that mg pilot the assistance there were some things like you're saying in the mg5 the infotainment system some of the plastics were a bit lightweight and inexpensive but overall it was given a great value for money and ticking a lot of boxes and you could see that from some of their sales in europe um what is your mm. most what are you most impressed about in this refreshed or renewed version blake that we've seen today yeah well obviously from how i'm speaking so far what you get for the money is the main thing but within that we're looking at vehicle to load capability here 2.2 kilowatts like this is it's starting to take an, an electric vehicle beyond being simply a vehicle talking about extra functionality that we've never seen on, on cars before really um you know over the last hundred years i'm talking about not with evs in the last few years so it's really going to shake up the market because what you get with this car for the price is just incredible. You know, you put this beside like an ID4, an Aria, you know, even the Q4 e-tron, lovely, lovely cars. Um, and they, they, they look better. They have a nicer interior, etc. Some of them are going to be a bit faster. But then you look at the price points and you go, hold on, I can have this MG ZS EV and I can go to Barbados for a two week holiday every year for the next five years with the change. And you just go, oh, this is going to shake things up. Manufacturers are no longer justified in adding 20 grand onto the price tag simply because it's an EV. And the fact that MG are going to shake up uh, the market where I am, but also, you know, US and European markets with these cars and these price points is extremely welcome. And I'm, I'm really going to praise them for that. For sure. Um, I really love the the refresh looks, the fact that they're taking the time just to do it because it was a great seller already, the MG ZS, but the renewed version looks great. I know we're both a huge fan of the blue that they have in a lot of the press releases mm -hmm. and in the video footage that we've used today. Really stands out in the road. You're letting people know you're driving an electric vehicle. Let us know in the comments what you think of the MG ZS, the original one, the renewed one. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Let us know. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Hit the like button. This has been EV Platform. Thank you very much for watching.